Hi everyone, it's Mike here. Now a while ago I made an 11 and a half inch circle art journal to work in, all by myself, without supervision, and I did promise you that when I got around to decorating the front cover that I would film it and show you what I have done with that, and I have done that now. But before I go into that, if you missed the creation of the journal and would like to watch that first in order, then I'll put a link to it just here so that you can click on that and go and watch it and then once you've done that you can come back and watch this one if you want to. If you're not bothered about watching it in any particular order then I will also put a link to it at the end of the video. So let's see what I did with my front cover. So I started off with rummaging through my drawer of washi tape and I pulled out all of the rolls of washi tape that I have that were just black and white. <clears throat> no coloured ones, I just went through all of the rolls and pulled out just the black and white ones. And then <clears throat> all I'm doing is, is pulling off small strips of um, one particular washi tape and then I'm just going to layer that over the edge all the way around. Now, as you can see I've done that all the way around so not to bore you and then I'm going to just take some of the other washi tape that I have and then just randomly place pieces of the others just to vary the, um, the size, the colour, uh, well not necessarily the colour, but the, the, the type of washi tape that I have around the, uh, the edge of the circle journal. Well, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to protect that raw edge of card where I've actually cut it. So that's why I'm doing this at this stage. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my matte medium from Mod Podge and I'm going to go over the entire of the front cover as well as the back of the cover to make sure that it's all stuck down and sealed and that the washi tape has no chance of peeling up and coming off again in the future. So I'm just adding the last pieces of washi tape to the outside of my front cover and then it's time to bring out that Mod Podge. Now there's nothing complicated in this next step, all I'm doing is just taking a brush and the Mod Podge and I'm just going to go around the edges of the washi tape and just make sure that it's all completely sealed down so that there's no chance of it peeling up again later. So then I'm just going to bring out my heat gun once I'm happy and then I'm just going to make sure it's all nice and dry before I flip it over and start working on the back. And I'm just going to repeat the same process on the front to the back of the cover. So nothing startling, nothing amazingly different, So, but I just wanted to show exactly how I did it so you have a complete picture. So this is a brand new art journal collage, a digital collage set that's now available on my Etsy store. And once again, I've done this in two different sizes. The one I'm showing you here is the full sized one for the large journals and these are the sheets for the smaller journal. So as you can see, there is a selection of different quotes in different fonts and you also have all the different layers for this image or you also have the big composite image that I'm going to work with here. So as you can see, I'm just going to use my craft knife and the craft mat and I'm just going to cut around the outer circle and then I'm ready to stick that down onto the front of my brand new circle journal. 
Before I stick it on, I'm deciding whether to actually use any of the coats on the front, but I think I've decided not to. So my front cover is going to be quoteless. So I'm being very brave and just dropping a dollop, yes it is a real word, of the matte medium onto the cover and I'm just going to make sure that there's a nice thick coating of the matte medium on the bottom because I don't want any wrinkles. So I'm going to apply this down. Now I did print this onto fairly thick um, card so I know it's not going to buckle too much. There will be one or two little wrinkles but not anything that I'm going to be overly concerned about. So I'm making sure that the Mod Podge is completely covering every single millimetre and eighth of an inch of my journal cover because I want to make sure it's all sealed. I will be adding acrylic paints to this later and I don't want for any of that paint to sink into the paper and grab it behind. So I want to make sure that it's all perfect to cover. That's why I'm showing you the full process rather than just skipping ahead because sometimes I think we do tend to skip ahead a little bit too much when people don't really see the full process of what we're doing. And somebody's recently asked me whether or not the matte medium from Mod Podge actually does dry completely matte or whether there's a sheen to it. No there isn't, this one is a real matte finish and which is why I prefer it. So time to add some colour. This time I'm going to bring out my Reeves acrylic paints. This is yellow ochre. And I'm going to mix a little bit of that paint on my craft mat with some water. And then I'm going to go around the outside of the circle journal, covering up all that washi tape um, and then bringing some of the colour into um, the, well, in between the flares on the sun and on the moon. And some of you may have actually noticed that there's been a subtle shift in the quality of the video between the last clip and this clip. That's because I've replaced my studio lighting between doing that part and this part. And also I started filming at 50 frames per second, but I switched from interlaced to progressive. Now, for those of you that like making videos uh, and do watch mine, um, that shift between interlaced to progressive makes a huge difference. So this is why um, the quality and the clarity of my videos has suddenly jumped up. And all I've done is just change the setting on my camera. So I've gone from 50i to 50p. And you can see the difference. So after that little tidy up and wipe around the edge of the journal to make sure that I don't get any of the paint on the, my mat, 
I'm bringing out my deep turquoise acrylic paint from the same company and I'm going to um, dry brush um, a little bit of that paint around the outside of the collage element that I put down and then I've taken a larger dry brush and I'm just going to use that big dry brush to blend that colour into the cover. So as you can see I'm only adding a little bit with the smaller brush and then using the bigger brush dry brushing it to blend that colour a little bit more. So I didn't want a harsh line so I wanted a little bit more of a blended line. Now blending your acrylic paint in this way with a dry brush um, works better if you're doing it on a surface that you've already prepared with the matte medium. Obviously if it's a non-porous surface it's going to blend easier than if it's, an, uh, if it's a porous surface. If it's porous then the paint's going to grab in there straight away. But if you've prepared the surface beforehand with a little bit of matte medium um, then it does blend much much easier. Now just because I didn't want to waste the paint that was left on my craft mat I'm just going to add that to the back of the circle journal and I will just randomly splash this on just covering up the edges uh, and then I will um, just basically I'm going to use the back of this journal uh, the cover of the journal as a little bit of a palette so I'll be using it to just slap on um, random bits of paint that's left over when I'm doing my pages so I didn't particularly or I'm not particularly paying that much attention to getting it exactly perfect because it's just going to be a place to use up last remnants. Okay, now that I've used up as much as I possibly can, I'm just going to have a bit of a tidy up and clear up because I don't want any of the paint that's been on the craft mat getting back onto the front cover and you will see me just wipe a little bit um, off later on and I'm just going to dry it off and then flip it back over and get started on the front again. So this is the titanium white from the Reeves again and again I'm just going to add a little bit of the white paint onto my craft mat and then mix it with a bit of the water and then I'm going to apply that to the outer rim of the journal. So I'm going to take that from the blue to the outer side of the journal and I was just basically I wanted something just to tone down the colour a little bit and then just to um, just kind of make it more um, I don't know what the word is, um, just a little bit more subtle. I didn't want it to be too in your face and so just using the white 
first of all, before I add on my next colour, just creates a little bit of a uh, more muted background. And as you can see, I'm using the same dry brush again, and I'm just doing the same technique that I did originally, and then just blending that white paint into the blue and out towards the edges of the circle journal. Now the shine on the circle journal that you can see is the wet paint. It's not any of the medium or anything like that. So once I've got the heat gun on it, all that shine disappears and it goes back to being completely matte. So I'm just apologizing here so because you can see the reflection of the camera in the stencil. This is the Reeves Brilliant Red and I'm using the Vanishing Circles 12 inch stencil from Prima, which is a thinner design. Now I'm just using a cosmetic sponge and just applying some of that brilliant red paint through the sponge, sorry, not through the sponge, through the stencil, just lightly. I'm not trying to get a perfect circle. I want uneven circles around and spiraling out from the center of my um, sun and moon. Um, I just want them a bit rough, so you'll see me try and position the, the stencil to make sure that it's in the right place um, because it did move a little bit. So yeah, we all have trials. So I'm just using the, the sponge just to go around and like I said, just roughly trying to get a little bit of that, a hint of that circle shape, and not necessarily the full circles. Now if you notice the circles at the bottom there are not complete circles so what I will do is I'll move the stencil around in a little while just to try and um, position the stencil over those to see whether I've got the same size that I can maybe create the bottoms of it. So I'm just matching up the pattern just to make sure that I don't have like half circles. Once again I'm just going to flip the journal over and use up the rest of the red and just add that to the back of the journal um, again like I said randomly not really paying any attention uh, any attention to where it's actually going uh, I'm just going to blend the color in because as I said I'm going to use the inside front cover just as a mop-up space for any leftover paints Okay, now that's done, time to carry on with the front. So I'm bringing back out the titanium white paint and I'm going to do exactly the same thing again, this time with another piece of sponge. This is just a, an old piece of bath sponge, not a, a cosmetic sponge or anything. And what I've done is I've repositioned the stencil, this time so it's just slightly offset from the original position that it was originally so that when I put the paint through the stencil we're going to get a second set of circles slightly offset from the original ones almost like creating a reverse shadow so instead of it being darker it's actually going to be lighter
So I'm just going to give it a quick dry off and then when it's all nice and dry and I know that I'm not going to smudge any of the paint, it's time to finally finish off those holes where the book rings go through. So this is the crocodile from We Are Memory Keepers and I've already punched the holes in so all I need to do now is just add in some eyelets into those holes and then crimp them down so that the holes don't fray. So I'm just going to crimp them in and then that's going to make sure that the holes that my book rings go through stay nice and crisp and sharp and they don't fray and tear. And I'm just using up the rest of that white paint and just wiping it off on the back. So that's it, that's the front of my circle journal complete. I'm really happy with it and all I have to do now is just to reassemble the cover onto the rest of the book. And the reason I'm using book rings on this is so that I can take the pages out at any time and work on them completely independently. So as I said, I'm very, very happy um, with the way that it works and I think, I, you know, I'm happy with the way it looks, very, very happy indeed. In fact, that's how much I'm happy with it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the process of me putting the cover to my journal. Obviously, I still have the back to do yet, so I will film that too, and then I'll make another video of that one so you can see exactly what I've been doing with it. Okay, so that's all from me. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.